The Red Sea is a place of enchanting beauty. On its health depend those who live in and off its waters. But it's a sea in deep trouble. Environmental destruction is no longer a threat, but a reality. Our actions at sea and on land endanger the very survival of this place. The Red Sea needs people who care. For decades, the Red Sea's spectacular coral reefs have been attracting visitors in increasingly large numbers. But this popularity has come at a price. Damage from boat anchors has been laying waste to some of the most precious reefs in the Red Sea. In the early 1990s, a group of dive operators responded by establishing the Hurgada Environmental Protection and Conservation Association. HEPCA got started by putting in place moorings to protect the fragile reefs from further degradation. On the waters off Hurgada, a mooring team from HEPCA is preparing to go underwater. Team leader Mostafa Abdallah has been closely involved in the setup of what is now the largest mooring system in the world. From the initial 100 moorings around Hurghada, the system now extends along the entire Egyptian Red Sea coast, with the concept being adopted by other countries in the region. اعتقد ان انجح مشاريع جمعيه محافظه على البيئه هبكه الفتره اللي فاتت او انا مش ما اقدرش اقول الفتره اللي فاتت في خلال 20 سنه اللي فاتوا اكيد هي مشروع الشمندرات ومثالي انجح حاجه حصلت في مشروع الشمندرات ان احنا عرفنا ننقل الاحساس بملكيه المشروع ده لكل مركب لكل مركز غطس لكل ريس لكل مستخدم في البحر لان بدون تضافر جهود كل المساهمين في المشروع والمستخدمين للمشروع اكيد المشروع ما كانش هيحقق النجاح اللي وصل له دلوقتي Following the success of the mooring project, Hepke's work expanded into other areas of environmental protection. Less than a generation ago, Urgada was little more than a sleepy fishing village. Its coastline, with fringing reefs, was an important nursery area for fish and other marine life. Now it's the domain of beachfront hotels, some of which have been built right on top of the reefs with disastrous consequences. Where corals once flourished, now only rubble remains. Even the coastline itself has been changed dramatically as a result of dredging and landfill. طبعا اعتمادا على دراسه تمت في في شرم الشيخ ان عندنا المتر المربع الواحد من الشعاب المرجانيه بيدخل للبلد بما يزيد عن او بما يصل الى حوالي 300 دولار للمتر المربع الواحد. فعلشان ندي فكره بس قد ايه احنا في مصر خسرنا لو خدنا الغردقه او شط الغردقه كمثال انه في الماضي قبل تطبيق قانون البيئه احنا فقدنا بما يتراوح بين اقل تقدير حوالي 3 مليون متر مربع من الشعاب المرجانيه في منطقه الغردقه. وده على الاقل اقل حاجه ان احنا خسرنا في هذا الموضوع حوالي 90 مليار دولار بس شعب مرجانيه. The mistakes made in Hurghada may be repeated elsewhere if left to Egypt's Tourism Development Authority. 
Blinded by the tourist dollar, it's marked the entire Red Sea coast for development in what it calls its master plan for the south. Here, pristine stretches of coastline still exist, but even areas within national parks are no longer safe. We're standing here in Ras Honkorab, inside Wadi Gemal National Park, one of the most pristine areas we have, the last line of defense as we call it. The Tourism Development Authority, with no vision, with no strategy, have managed to sell plots of lands in this area to mega investors who are going to turn it into another mass tourism destination, which will be completely disastrous. At Chagra Bay, just north of Marsa Alam, Hossam Helmi has been a close witness to the development of the south. A pioneer in ecotourism, he's being forced by the government to turn his dive camp into a resort. أنا لو عملت 800 غرفة فيه يبقى معنى كده إن كل الحياة البحرية والمعطيات الطبيعية اللي فيه هتنتهي وتختفي في خلال أشهر عديدة ثلاث أربع أشهر واختفت الحياة فيه أنا عملت عدد محدود من الغرف لا يتعدى 120 غرفة وعملت أنواع من الإقامة أخرى زي الخيام والهطاط بحيث إن أنا أحافظ على الخليج وحافظ على الحياة البحرية اللي فيه بحيث إن أنا نقدر إن إحنا نستفيد منه إحنا والأجيال اللي بعدينا والأجيال اللي بعديهم نحافظ عليه للمستقبل بتاع المنطقة ككل Hepka has been exposing illegal construction projects while fighting others in court Giftun, an island surrounded by stunning reefs just offshore from Hurghada became a major conservation battleground for the organization. In early 2004, the Egyptian government sold the island to a group of Italian investors who had plans to build an airstrip and a number of hotels on it. By rapidly mobilizing thousands of people and numerous local organizations, Hepke drew international attention to the cause. Within two weeks, former Egyptian President Mubarak intervened to cancel the deal and Giftun was saved. I think the most important thing on the island was the attack on the island of the Giftun after the attack on the island of the Giftun after the attack on the island of the Giftun. And I think it's not the most important thing on the island of the Giftun. I think it's the most important thing on the island of the Giftun that started or started to put the first attack on the island of the Giftun for a special attack on the island of the Giftun that they wanted to ask for the rights of the من خلال حملات زي دي من خلال قضايا اللي تم رفعها في المحاكم لاسترداد الجفتون وما بعد ذلك من قضايا تم رفعها لاسترداد بعض الاراضي اللي تم تخصيصها داخل منطقه المحميات الطبيعيه في مصر اعتقد ان الجفتون ادتنا امل ان ان ادتنا امل ان اكشولي في امل ان احنا ننجح من خلال اللوبينج ومن خلال حملات الدعوه وكسب التاييد من خلال قضايا اللي تروح في المحاكم ان احنا نوصل لنتيجه محدده واحنا كنا سعداء جدا جدا بالنتيجه اللي احنا وصلنا لها. With Hepke as its environmental watchdog, Egypt will have to choose between protecting its natural treasures for future income or selling out to tourism for short-term gain. For longer than anyone here can remember, the Red Sea has provided to those who fished along its shores. But now illegal catches and destructive fishing methods are driving the stocks towards depletion. For Solomon Uda, who has seen so much change in 70 years of fishing, it's almost more than he can bear. Fishing with nets or poison may be illegal, but is very common in the absence of real enforcement. Hepka patrol boats, often acting on the information from their members and collaborating with the Coast Guard, catch some, but not all of the violators. This man, caught fishing with poison inside Giftun National Park, was fined a considerable sum and banned from fishing for three months. 
In June 2009, the signing of the so-called Hurghada Declaration seemed to provide a glimmer of hope. The decree established the Red Sea as a no-take zone, banning all netting and trawling activities. Sharks, as top predators, are among the species most vulnerable to overfishing. Hunted for their valuable fins, they remain a target for illegal fishing throughout the Red Sea. These sharks were caught by Yemeni fishermen operating illegally in Egyptian waters. With Hepka's assistance, the Navy tracked down and arrested the fishermen, confiscating their catch. A ban on shark fishing has won Egypt critical acclaim abroad. But in the absence of true enforcement, some shark species are at great risk of disappearing from the Red Sea altogether. Most problems out at sea find their origin on land. Coastal landscapes along the Red Sea are littered with plastic bags. Much of this waste is blown out to the ocean, forming a serious threat to marine life. 70% of all turtles in the Red Sea are believed to die from ingesting plastics. Tackling the problem at its core, Hepke has taken the lead on legislation to ban the use of plastic bags. الهدف من توزيع الشنط دي ان احنا نبتدي نرفع الوعي البيئي للناس بان هم لازم يستخدموا الشنط القماش او غيرها اكتر من مرة احنا مش عايزين نطبق قانون احنا عايزين نغير سلوكيات ونعود الناس على انهم يستخدموا البديل المصريين عاشوا فترة طويلة جدا من غير استخدام الكياس البلاستيك وكانوا كويسين وعايشين حياتهم ما فيش اي مشكلة برقادة a city which has more than 300,000 residents and sees around 3 million tourists per year produces more than 450 tons of garbage per day. In the past, more than half this rubbish was left to pile up on the city's streets and ultimately make its way into the environment. But since 2011, Hepke has taken on full responsibility for the city's solid waste management. Now, a red army of workers and a diverse fleet of garbage trucks sweeps through the city on a daily basis. This <laughs> تم شراء عربيات مهيئة لجميع لجميع احتياجات المدينة. Another important element has been to involve the community in the solid waste management scheme and ensure fair and healthy conditions for its workforce. أعتقد أحد إنجازات 
منظومة المخلفات الصلبة أيضا كان مما لا شك فيه هو العمل البشري إن إحنا يبقى عندنا هذا الكم من العمالة بتكلم حوالي 700 عامل ما بين سواق ومهندس وعامل نظافة في الشارع وعامل على العربية وبهذا المستوى من الأجور وبهذا المستوى من الرعاية الصحية متهيألي ده كان إنجاز كنا كنا فخورين بيه لأن كجمعية أهلية لما دخلنا في الموضوع ما دخلناش بفكرة القطاع الخاص الاهتمام بالعمل البشري كان مهم جدا جدا ما كانش ينفع ن ن ن ن نتجاهل العمل البشري ونتعامل مع موضوع قطاع خاص ويبقى عندنا عمال بيشتغلوا بظروف مكحفة وبيشتغلوا تحت وجود عدم رعاية صحية فأعتقد إن إحنا كنا سعداء جدا بما تم إنجازه في, في هذا الموضوع بالذات HEPCA aims to expand the solid waste management program to include everything from material recovery, recycling, and potentially even energy generation from garbage. And with Hurghada setting the example, the next step will be to have the whole of Egypt's Red Sea coast following its lead. In the south, HEPCA has already been given the exclusive responsibility for waste collection and recycling. Garbage trucks collect the waste from resorts, delivering it to a central sorting station near Marsa Alam. Here, garbage is being separated into glass, metals, plastics and organics, all of which are being recycled. We collect the from the from 40 We collect from 40 to 50 a day. بنقوم بعملية فرز المواد العضوية المواد العضوية بتوصل للجماعة البدو والعرب القاطنين بجبال البحر الأحمر بعد كده بنقوم بفرز وجمع المخلفات اللي هي البلاستيك والبي تي وجميع أنواع الرابش بنقوم بعادة تدويرها تاني بحيث إن هي بتخش الأول على سير الفرز بعد كده كلها بتصنف كل نوع لوحده and so the waste of some becomes food to others. The Hepka trucks deliver the organic waste directly to some of the Bedouin communities living along the coast. Persistent droughts are making it harder for them to feed their goats, which means the organic material is more than welcome. For Hepka, protecting the environment has to go hand in hand with taking care of the communities living inside national park areas. I think we have seen in the past few years that the new generation of the community is going to في حماية الدرافيل وفي الدراسات عن الأبحاث وعن السلاحف وعن حماية الشعب المرجانية داخل نطاق المحميات مع إهمال أهم مكون في داخل المحمية اللي هو العامل البشري السكان الأصليين للمكان البدو سواء من عبابدة أو البشرية اللي عايشين في المنطقة لا يليق ولا يصح إن إحنا بنصرف فلوس في أبحاث علمية مثلا والسكان والبني آدمين اللي في المكان مش لاقيين مياه مياه حلوه يشربوا بيها. لا يليق ان احنا نبقى بنبني محطه ابحاث والبدو والقبائل اللي موجوده حوالينا ما عندهاش بيت تسكن فيه. فاعتقد ان ده كان الدافع الاساسي لجمعيه هبكة انها تتبنى مشاريع خدمه مجتمع ان احنا نبقى بنبني بيوت بنحفر ابار بنطور مدارس لان غير كده اعتقد ان احنا ما كناش هنبقى راضيين اطلاقا عن ادائنا في هذه المرحله. One of Hebka's community projects is the one it's running in Shalatin, close to the border with Sudan. These women, also mostly from Bedouin tribes, are supported in producing handicrafts, which provide them with a vital source of income. اللي زوجها هاجرها اللي مطلقة وعندها أطفال فعايزة دخل مستمر للسيدة Handicraft workers receive professional training here in branding, marketing and enhancing their products At the village of Hafafit Hebke working together with the Italian Ministry for Foreign Affairs has created 20 eco-homes for the local Bedouin community These houses were built with natural materials from the area and designed in consultation with the community. 
a well with a pump powered by solar energy provides the local herds with water. Soon, this village will also have a school, a nursery, a handicrafts workshop and a community centre. Another new area for Hepke's work is that of scientific research. Internationally renowned coral scientist David Obura is collecting data on the fringing reef of Egypt's south coast. His research, comparing the resilience of Red Sea reefs to global warming with that of other areas in the world, is in part facilitated by Hepke. In my experience, it's been very valuable to work with NGOs supporting us in doing our research on marine protected areas because when we do that, there's an agency directly involved on the ground or in the water so that when we have our results and we talk with the people on the ground, they'll take it forward and they'll, they'll implement some of the findings that we come up with. Apart from collaborating with existing science programs, Hepke now also intends to initiate its own research projects. If you want to have convincing conservation and achievable gains in the field, what you need to do is have science as the foundation of this conservation. One crucial step has been fitting out the RV Red Sea Defender as a state-of-the-art research vessel. With its high fuel efficiency, long-range capability and facilities such as onboard laboratories, it provides an ideal platform from which to conduct research throughout the Red Sea. And this site at Port Galib, close to Hurghada, will soon become the home of a new Hepke research station. With direct access to one of the most spectacular reef ecosystems on the planet, its facilities will cater to teams of Egyptian and international scientists. I think it's a very significant step forward for Egyptian science, but also marine science globally, because there's going to be easier and better access to Red Sea uh, environments through this HIPCA research station. A prime example of HEPCA's own scientific projects is the research conducted on turtles along Egypt's Red Sea coast. Well, the main problem is that uh, there is really a huge lack of information of, on marine turtles in, in the area. We know that all the threats that uh, brought to the decline of uh, marine turtle population worldwide, they are all present in, uh, here in the, in the Red Sea. So all the information that we are gathering now, it will be used to establish uh, specific conservation measures for marine turtles in the, in the area. We snorkel uh, uh, along transit and we count uh, uh, turtles and every time we spot the turtle we take a few more data like the species, the approximate size and gender and uh, the activity at first sight and the idea is uh, to, uh, uh, from that is to obtain an estimate of the, uh, the total population of uh, especially green and oxbill turtles in the southern Egyptian Red Sea. Uh, the problem is that most of the nesting sites now are uh, located on beaches that uh, are being built on. So really all the constructions uh, on the beach and close to the nesting areas are a threat, a serious threat uh, for the population. The coral reef is without any doubt the Red Sea's most important ecosystem. On its health depends nearly all marine life here. Since 2010, Hepke's Coastal Survey Project monitors the state of the reefs, mapping the most sensitive areas and collecting crucial data for conservation. من المنطقة بتاعت الدراسة اللي إحنا بندرس فيها بقالنا أكثر من عشر شهور وجدنا إن في بعض المناطق عليها ضغط كبير جدا من أعمال السياحة خصوصا مراكب الغطس أو السياح والأماكن ديت علشان الضغط فيها مش منظم. الحالة بتاعت الشعب المرجانية فيها سيئة جداً 
بعض الاماكن الثانيه اللي الضغط فيها منظم او السياحه فيها منظمه او الاستخدام فيها بطريقه مستدامه حاله الشعب فيها ممتازه ومبشره بالخير وبتقول ان في اماكن كويسه في مصر لسه ممكن الناس تختص فيها وممكن الناس ممكن تمثل دخل لكثير من المصريين. Dolphins belong to the most iconic and spectacular animals of the Red Sea. But they're also among the most sensitive to disturbance by human activities. HEPCA's Red Sea Dolphin Project surveys dolphin populations in the southern Red Sea for 12 weeks out of the year. 12 animals, rough, one new, two newborn and one cow. Researchers from HEPCA, combined with interns and volunteers from around the world, conduct transect surveys from the MV Red Sea Defender. This research, using photo identification and hydrophone recordings, provides much needed information on the ecology, population size and distribution patterns of the eight dolphin species found in the Red Sea. At least here, at the marine reserve of Samadai, the dolphins find refuge. This sanctuary is the result of a collaboration between HEPCA, the National Park Authority, and local partners. HEPCA researchers give presentations on the tourist boats visiting the area to explain about the dolphins and the need for their protection. Elsewhere, dolphins are not so lucky. On the waters of Hurgada, a daily fleet of tourist boats chases the animals around, severely disturbing their feeding and resting behavior. Dive operator Michael Stadermann has made a long-term study of the area's dolphins and their behavior in relation to tourists. In a so stark boom touristic area, wo das Meer eigentlich die Anziehungskraft ist, die die Menschen hierher bringt, muss bedeuten mehr Aufklärung betrieben werden. Also wir brauchen eine Aufklärung bei den Leuten, aber ganz speziell die Guides und die Kapitäne, die auf den Booten sind, dass die eine größere Distanz halten zu den Tieren und sie nicht so gestresst werden. The work carried out by Stadermann and his team has resulted in a code of conduct for interaction with dolphins. And here at Fanus Reef, a safe zone has been created, providing the dolphins with a resting area and a reprieve from the pursuit by tourist boats. Stadermann embodies what is still HEPCA's core strength. Its member organizations, which includes a diverse range of hotels, resorts and dive operators. They help by providing logistical support, educating the public and reporting violations. Nous avons l'avantage d'avoir un bateau en mer tout le temps, chaque semaine, qui part en croisière avec des guides qui sont formés dessus et qui expliquent tout ce qu'ils voient chaque jour sur, sur la mer. Nous supportons EPCA parce qu'il est très important d'être actif, de ne pas laisser faire les choses. Et quand il y a des gens qui sont motivés et qui sont euh, impliqués, il faut absolument les suivre. Donc, euh, donc on le fait pour l'avenir, pour l'état de la mer, pour notre travail, pour nos enfants. مصر حصل فيها تطور في النوع السائح فالسياحة الشاطئية ابتدت تبقى أكثر أهمية من سياحة الأطار وابتدى السائح يجي للمقاصد الشاطئية زي البحر الأحمر الغردقة شرم الشيخ وكل منطقة ساحلية وابتدى يبقى هدفه إن هو يجي يتمتع بالشمس وبالجو وبالبيئة وبالبحر طبعا مهم قوي إن هو يجي يعمل دايفنج ويجي يعمل سنوركلينج ويجي يشوف الكورلز اللي هي ما زالت حية ولذلك إحنا لازم نحافظ عليها وده سبب رئيسي لهبكة انها تلعب الدور ده في الحفاظ على البيئة. After nearly two decades, Hepke has become an important player in the protection of the Red Sea. With ever increasing environmental pressure, its role is now more relevant than ever before. المسألة مش مسألة شمس وبحر، الشمس والبحر موجودين في كل حتة في العالم. البحر الأحمر بيتميز عن أي حتة تانية في إن هو فيه أكثر من 1200 فصيل من فصائل الأسماك وفي أكثر من 800 فصائل من الشعب المرجانية وهي دي اللي بتميزنا عن أي مكان آخر في العالم ده الهرم ده أبو الهول 
ده المتحف المصري اللي موجود عندنا اللي احنا لازم نحافظ عليه واذا كنا احنا ما احناش عارفين كده يبقى احنا اكيد مش عارفين حاجه اعتقد ان الحفاظ على البيئه بشكل عام في مصر ما هوش رفاهيه ربط الحفاظ على البيئه بتميت مر اقتصاديه ربط الحفاظ على البيئه باهميه ده للشعب كله كموارد اقتصادي اصبح موضوع لا يمكن ان احنا نتعامل معاه ان هو شيء طرف واعتقد ان بعد الثوره غياب الاراده السياسيه اللي كان موجود واللي ادى لتدهور كثير من الاوضاع البيئيه اعتقد ان احنا في سبيل ان احنا نتحرك الى الامام في خطوات كثيره في هذا الشان Hepke was born from the passion to protect a place of magical beauty. It needs all of our support to care for the Red Sea on behalf of those who live in its waters and along its shores.